and that is right everyone welcome to another video i am the number one heel the man that i was to flash the cash the man the man the man and hall of famer the upr strike general manager himself ricky goldman ricky goldman ricky goldman i've got a guest joining me once again for a second time but before all of that, this is a channel that should be on your calendars every day. The channel that is the centre of everything. The channel with its own show and the channel that is taking over Snapchat. It is the People's Wrestling Channel. And right now, you tell all your friends, you spread the week, you get your voice on, you tell everyone you know. Check out all my other videos. We have a massive, gigantic like, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe right now for those two, 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 two shout outs. Check, smash that bell right now. Smash, smash, yeah, smash that bell right now to enable to go one of my notifications on. Check out that description. All my other videos are there to check them out. So then you share, 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 share again. Come back, right back here. Comment below. Comment, comment, comment below. I'm your Facebook, Ricky JP. If I'm on Twitter, Rick the Rock 30, go view and like WWA World Wrestling Alliance on Facebook. Check my blog, both Facebook and Twitter. Then back here, you. You do uh, back here, yes, back here, Facebook and Twitter, UPR and Popular Review, UPR and Popular Review, UPR and Popular Review, that is UPR and Popular Review. But with any more talking, let's not hesitate. I'll bring my guest in right now. He is, you've seen him before, and to see him again, he is none other than Review Geek 3000. And how are you tonight? Who are you going to call? Review Geek 3000. <laughs> that is right. How are you? Cool, mate. Stay awesome, as always. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm okay. So, um, I believe you wanted to, before we start this, um, say something about Roman Reigns. Well, it's regarding Brian Alvarez. Um, as we know, Brian Alvarez is a... Is a American semi-retired professional wrestler. He does a satellite radio podcast host and uh, he reviews wrestling. He's a journalist. But he said something on one of his podcasts um, about Roman Reigns, um, about his cancer, about his leukemia. But um, whatever the situation is, I just want to say that... Uh, I think he owes a massive apology to not just Roman Reigns, to all the people who have suffered with cancer. Uh, um, his comment was a bit out of the ordinary. Um, it's nothing that should be said from his level, especially as a journalist. Um, you know, um, whatever the situation is with, with Roman, you know... Um, Cancer, leukemia is nothing to joke about, really. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, completely agreed. Yeah, com yeah, nothing to joke about. It isn't funny at all. It's horrible, horrible thing for the people that have it. Uh, very, I'll just very quickly kind of take take ten things just to give my thoughts. Whatever Brian right Albers has said is out of order. I'm not aware of it. If it's on Twitter, you can tell me later. Um, which I'm surprised because people you tell me. Anyway, um, I'm going to do, going into it too much, but it was in question how serious Roman Reigns looking me was because he went to make a movie. That's all I'm going to say. So yeah. I think I did think, do think Roman, Roman Reigns had it. I do think he was ill. I think he was serious enough for him to take time off, but I don't know. Um, so we, this is going to be a review this time, so not predictions, and it's going to be none other than the 2020 version of Survivor it's... Series. And we start with, and I, and I love the tribute of the bandana, but none other than the dead man himself. So we will start with that. We'll start with the Undertaker's final farewell. I want your thoughts first. What did you think? Oh, I was hoping you saved this one for last. Um, you know, because obviously The Undertaker was the one who saved the night here, as per usual, as like he does at WrestleMania. Um, you know, with with um, 
with the level that he's at, you know. Um, the level that he's at, it, it's uncomparable to to anyone, really. You know, um, that night. Well, all I'm going to say is, I'm going to say this. Is this the end for the dead man? Do you think it's the end for the dead man, Ricky Pate? Goldman. Um, Ricky Goldman, sorry. Um, is this a goodbye? No. I think we'll see him at the Hall of Fame. When, I think he's going in 2022. They'll listen to me next year, but I'm sure this next year's plastic this year. Uh, so, yeah, he'll be going to the Hall of Fame. Definite first ballot, definite headline star. And I think he'll do something at WrestleMania when he goes in. I think they'll try and get as much as they can of out from the Undertaker because this will be the last. But as far as in-ring goes, no. I think I think this is, is the end. Um, a bunch of people don't, don't want this to happen, but it is the end. The Undertaker is an, is an iconic character, one whose creativity and showmanship captivates as has captivated an entire generation of fans, including myself. His career is unparalleled, um, incomparable to, you know, the respect he has from the, the respect that he that he has from his fans, his peers. The rest is backstage. is is incomparable. Um, they l- look up to him um, backstage. Like he's, you know, a father to them. Um, yeah. He's earned this farewell. Some will argue, you know, most critics will probably argue um, it should have been bigger, it should have been grander, but I think it was perfect. Um, that entrance, like I said on, your, on the previous review of this um, on Twitter, it had that WrestleMania feel. The 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 way he come out to the ring. You had the flames going off in the whole Thunderdome. It felt like a WrestleMania entrance to me. And I just had that last match vibe from the whole from the whole uh, entrance. Um, but again, you know, when when we saw that hologram at the end, the Paul Bear. It was emotional for me, um, you know, when I thought, you know what, this is, this is, is this is goodbye to the taker. Yeah, um, and I believe we both met him at Love, at Love the Wrestling, which was, well, yeah, which was fantastic for me meeting the Undertaker. I never thought I would. What, what, what was your thoughts on meeting the Undertaker? To be honest, mate, there is nothing, no struggle. There is no struggle that can be put into my life that is going to take away that moment. Um, You know, um, to have met The Undertaker, to have met me, Mark Callis, to have met Big Evil, to have met The Punisher, The Punisher, Dice Morgan, you know, um, that was probably one of the highlights of my life, to be honest. Um, I was so lucky to have met him before the actual pandemic dropped. um, You know what I mean? And, to have met this guy where millions have been unlucky to have met him because of this pandemic, because of this, because of the lockdown. And I was one of the lucky ones to have met him. I'm so fortunate for it. I'm, I'm really like, you know, I I see that as probably one of the highs in my life, to be honest. It's up there. Yeah, definitely. Sorry. Yeah, definitely. Um, I thought I'd never meet him. It was, yeah. To be honest, mate. Well, um, not as big as a rock, but it was a dream it was come before, true, definitely. I, I was sat, I was sat at work, and um, I remember my mates coming to to coming to see me, and they said, uh, "Do you want to come to Love Ref? Do you want to come to the Love of Wrestling?" I didn't book the event. I didn't book a hotel, and they just come up to me one Friday and said. Do you want to come with us this weekend? We're going to the love of the love of wrestling. I was like, I haven't even got a ticket. I haven't even got 
you know, um, a hotel, but bang, it happened. And then uh, I was lucky to have <laughs> lucky to have met the guy when when it happened. To be honest, mate. Yeah, totally agree. It was a, something I never thought would happen. But we kind of very quickly to speed this along because. But yeah, um, thanks. So first of all, thank you to Taker. Thank you, Dead Man Legend, for thirty years, unparalleled and unmatched. Well, very quickly, well, not very quickly, but I'll run through his final farewell but, and legends that came out. Again, Some were a again, surprise. So, but one more thing though. Again, again though, um, the build up for the build up from two thousand nineteen onwards to present I really thought I wouldn't have met the bloke um, but again when I'm actually stood there in front of him had that picture with him and he was right next to me it, it blew me away mate it blew me yeah, away same. so I'll run through the legends I guess you could say that came out so Shane McMahon Big Show JBL Booker T Ric Flair The Godfather Ricky Tri The Godwins <laughs> Kevin Nash, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Mick Foley, Savio Vega, Jeff Hardy, and Kane. Oh, no surprise. Uh, then we have Vince McMahon in the ring, looking about as ancient as only Vince can. Um, and Vince knows this is the end, and he, he was very emotional. The entrance, fantastic. The guitar, the electric, the guitar riff, the raising up. I think that was because it was Undertaker's knees. So that's what some people have said. Um, but yeah, it was still cool, regardless whether it was because of his knees or not. Um, didn't really say much, didn't really have to say much. Undertaker as a man of few words, the Paul Paul, uh, Paul Bear hologram, yeah, all done very well. Could they have done what they did with Ric Flair? Yes, yes, they could, but it, they were in a vibe in the middle of a pandemic, so it is what it is. But it's better something similar, like Ric Flair, maybe at Mania when he does go in the Hall of Fame if not at the Hall of Fame. Um, but yeah, this was done well. And I think they very well teased of maybe the Fiend attacking him. But obviously that never happened. And thank God it didn't happen. Because I think this should very well be the end. So let's just get some some matches, shall we? Yeah, go for it, mate. Okay. So we'll start with... I'm in no rush to do this, but we'll do it anyway. The uh, kickoff show. I will just take about 10 seconds. We had, speaking of legends, <laughs> the comedy Duca. This, this one will be quick. Years. The pre show will well, be quick. <laughs> yeah. The comedy Duca, still, after 30 years, still relevant. He won the 24 7 title, his first ever title ever. So, what did you think about this? Nothing really. Um, <laughs> I, I thought the twenty four seven title was good when it first dropped, um, but after seeing the same people win it after week back to back, you know it's getting boring now. Completely agree. You know, just kind of keep with the twenty four seven title theme. So later on in the night, you had Akira Tozawa win it back. They are truth winning back again, which you know, real, very made it as quick as I can. On truth is funny, fantastic, great for his career. He makes it entertaining, but why keep having all his truth winning it back? I personally would have for somebody from SmackDown win it. You've got then have those people winning it. You mid carders are never going to get a title ever in their life. They win it. NXT, NXT UK, two or five live. I mean, all brands. There you go. And have our truth winning it back on Raw. People aren't tuning in going, "Is our truth on Raw?" Who gives a damn? But at least give people ah. something. Rather than nothing. He's, he's nearly going to beat Ric Flair now, isn't he? <laughs> I think he's like 45 champions. <laughs> 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 that in itself is ridiculously funny. but uh. <laughs> And then we actually got a match on the kickoff show, Battle Royal match. The Miz one. This, this was a complete mess to me. This was all over. Could have had Dominic winning. Why would you have the Miz win? What did you think? I had Jeff Hardy to win this match. Um, or Alistair Black. Um, but I was quite annoyed um, of the fact that we saw Dominic and Miz. Oh. Jesus, sorry. 
Oh dear. I'm gone. Hey, you're sorry about that. I died. <laughs> All right, sorry, carry what on. Sorry. Botch. Completely botch. <laughs> right, go on. Sorry. But yeah, um, what can I say? There was a lot of... <sighs> Miss. Mayhem. Is that what you look at the word you're looking for? <laughs> The worst of all, no one, re- no one is really better off for having competed here. Um, the fact that the Miz and Dominic were outside the ring for most of, avoiding elimination, and that's what annoyed annoyed me really. Um, and then for Miz to have come in with sneaky fashion to get to get the win, um, but yeah, the Miz won. I think if you have the Miz win. And then um, teaser catching later on. This would have made sense, but it didn't really make any sense. But doesn't WWE doesn't make sense? So let's just kill ourselves right now. <laughs> so let's not. Okay, uh, let's just carry on with the show then. Uh, so we'll mix. Put that back later. Um, so we'll mix up the matches rather than going in match order that we're on the card. We'll go to start with the women's match. For the better match of the night, you had SmackDown won the champion, Sasha Banks taking on Raw with the champion, Asuka. What did you think about this one? <sighs> Show steal. It was a uh, A grade for me. Um, again, it was impossible for Asuka and B- Sasha Banks to have a bad match, really. Um, coming out from Hell in the Cell when we saw Bailey and Sasha Banks tear that roof down at Hell in the Cell. And it was, you know, a, an A-grade match, four-star match. Um, again, we saw this here at Survivor Series. Um, and Oscar and Sasha Banks tore that roof down. Um, there was lots of reversals, counters, um, you know what I mean? And with similar fashion to Helena Sal, we saw this here with Oscar, with Oscar and uh, Sasha Banks. And fair play to... Fair play to um, Sasha Banks winning this match, and it was the right move for WWE to further solidify her t- title reign. And uh, especially since Oscar has been at the top of her game on the red brand, and we're going to see this carry through with Sasha Banks going to be on the top of her game on the blue brand. Yeah, first of all, sorry about that botch. I've got my phone plugged in every speak. <laughs> no way, kind of giving the secrets away here, but there you go. Um, go with completely lost my train of thought as well. Um, oh, yes, Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. Uh, instant classic at Hell in a Cell, but then you weren't going to have a bad match with Sasha and Bailey. Um, yeah, this was a good match. One of the better matches of the night. Both women looked good here, and neither one of them looked weak. Fairly went the distance. It was a fair. It's been because a lot of the matches were just bit getting speeder speed through it, went as fast as they could. Which I thought it was bad. This one went the distance. Distance. Um, yeah, neither looking weak here. Back and forth action as you would expect. A good match as you, like you said, as you would expect from both these two. But we can both agree here. Um, we can both agree here that that this match was probably the better match than most of most of the card. Really, um, same with the main event. These two matches are probably the only two matches that were decent in the actual pay per view itself. Yeah, so you had Sasha Bank picking up the win here, which, um, yeah, pushes her as being champion, pushes, helps out to Star Wars thing, and slightly helps out a thing with that like Snoop Dogg. Somebody might go out and buy the t shirt now because of Cousins. What is Cousins won? I don't know. Um, Whatever, just do you? I don't. Do you do you get the Snoop Dogg Undertaker thing? Do you get what's going on there? Or uh, well, he's doing his own brand, isn't he? Um, but yeah, it's new, it's fresh. Teachers we'll look good, happens. but I won't be rushing out buying one. <laughs> we'll see where it goes, eh? Yeah. So we will go to the second match, which was. Tag team title match, not tag title match, tag teams facing each other. This could have been a lot better than it was. 
Put that take chance second on raw take chance. So I'll take this one first. Um, New Day look good in first of all. New Day in Gears of War is fantastic for them. Great for them. Their gear looked spot on. It looked really good here. Um, a modern day rematch, I would say. Uh, also, I was expecting Biggie to turn heel. That never happened. Would have thought Biggie would turn heel. Street Boys turn heel. Dylan Vega turned heel. You've got a big heel group. And they all take titles or whatever. Um, no, Zelina Vega. Bianca Belair. Zelina Vega's gone. Jesus Christ. Um, this was a good match. Yeah, like I said, it could be better than I thought it was. Could be a lot better than I thought it was. That makes sense. A lot better than it was. Jesus. Botch after botch after botch. You botch a mania. Botcher mania. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> both tag teams looking good. High flying moves we respect. And three puppets went over a new day, given the win. What did you think? It could have been a lot better. It was short lived. Um, but again, Street Profits needed this, needed this win um, over New Day for them to go forward. Um, to have more credibility, really, with the fans. Yeah. Um, did you expect them to turn heel, or? I was, yeah. I had a lot of, I had um, a lot of belief in street profits here. I thought something would have went down at least. I thought Big E would have cost them. I think, oh, I thought Big E would have interfered, um, cost Kofi Kingston, done something anyway to have. To have cost New Day um, the match, but that w- that didn't happen. I, I had so much expectations for Big E to to do something on the night um, with New Day, and that would have carried a feud between Big E or Kofi Kingston um, to go on to WrestleMania. But again, um, this is the creativity that WWE are lacking at the moment, and it's. It's terrible, really. I expected him to turn heel to completely get to completely switch on the new day, but then they're in the gears of war. So would that promote? Does it, would that help them in gears of war? Probably not. So that's probably why. It would have been more credible. Yeah. It would have been more credible if Big E had came out, did something to have cost New Day. You know, gone heel, moved from New Day totally, but it never happened, and there. Uh, that's what was annoying, really, of that match. Yeah. So we'll go to the opening match. Traditional 5 on 5 Survivor Series, series match. Thought this would mean a lot later on in the card. But Team Raw versus Team Spider will probably quickly run for the members. So starting with Raw. AJ Styles, Braun Strowman, Keith Lee, Seamus Riddle, SmackDown, Seth Rollins, Otis, Jay King Corbin, and Kevin Owens. Your thoughts first. <sighs> gasp really um i had big expectations from kevin owens big expectations from seth rollins big expectations from king corbin here but you had three good superstars in that team of smackdown um one which two should have buried um two superstars on raw um you had seth rollins and you had kevin owens capable of um Burying two superstars on the on the raw brand, but that never happened. We um, saw something strange go down um, at first in the match. We saw Seth Rollins refusing to wrestle, and um, we saw Sheamus do the bro kick, and that and Seth Rollins was buried, um, and that just highlights the fact that you know him and Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle have a problem. And uh, Seth Rollins doesn't want to work Matt Riddle. Um, and we saw that heavily on that night there. Um, um, so basically, that, w- that was it, really. Um, yeah, Team Raw looked really well. They did a clean sweep of SmackDown. And that's it, really. I think the Seth getting the to like that was more to kill the gimmick off what. But I think more it was more than that. What do you think? Rather than wanting to work with Riddle, it was more to kill off the gimmick. What do you think? I've heard stories that he doesn't want to work with Matt Riddle. 
Um, um, whether it's a conspiracy to, theory, whether it's just inside wrong, news maybe. for you, but a little bit of inside news for you. Um, one of the people that work for you, the, the, no one was getting paid here, but work, I guess you could say, for UPR. One of them, well, a couple of them know Matt, Matt Riddle very, very well. And one of them has said, sort of kind of best friend with Matt Riddle and has said that Seth has said to him in a text, I'd love to work with you one day. Whether it's going to happen or not, whether it's just a throwaway yeah, comment, yeah. Like, I'd love to work with you. Never, I've never in the intention of doing it. That's what he said. So, whatever. I think it was more to kill off the gimmick. And I think he comes back at the Rumble or whenever he's coming back as face. I was having two months off because of Becky Lynch. Um, this was an okay match. It was what it was. <laughs> Like I said, Rollins kill off the gimmick. Otis looked good here. You had Otis slam Braun Strowman. Are they making him a star now? Jesus. Are, they, are the rumours true and he, Otis still got that contract? will not surprise me. Um, this is the match I'll be remembering next week. Clean sweep. Uh, and all they were letting down Rick Drummer Reigns already, which I'm surprised at. I thought they would have built to that. But there you go. Raw it's on top. Again, you know what I mean? Um... Again, it was a, it was a good clean sweep of Raw, but is it a match to remember? Really, no. no. Um, you know what I mean? So we'll there, were, the... there, were, there were big expectations from Seth Rollins, big expectations from Kevin Owens, um, but that wasn't carried through on the night, really. So and that's what, what I'm, that's what I'm Sorry. annoyed about. Um, you know, I'm a massive fan of Braun Strowman, but again, um, you know. Seth Rollins could at least buried one. It could at least buried yeah. Sheamus in. It could at least buried Sheamus in that match. Kevin Owens again could at least contested AJ Styles in that match. Um, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, but never happened, and that that's what was annoying. Really, it was quickly sweeped. It was a quick whole sweep from Raw, and um, it yeah. didn't look it didn't look credible in my eyes. So we'll go to the second five on five women's action, which was a bit better than the, than the um, men's. So I'll start with SmackDown this time. The members, Bailey, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Ruby Wright, and Natalia, Team Raw, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lana, Lacey Evans, and Peyton Royce. I'll take this first. Uh, yeah, this was a decent match. Uh, Peyton Royce picking up a big win over Bailey, which was great for her. That writes Bailey off TV. I believe she's got a death in her family. I believe it's her father in law. Um, but then Peyton Royce instantly buried like that, which we call it buried, but it very quickly took out the match by Natalia. Got tapped out by Natalia. Uh, Bianca Bailey had a good show in here. She slammed Nia Jax. Uh, Lynn Morgan had a good show in. All of them really did. We'd be right. Very convincing of being knocked out as well. You had Shayna Baszler get eliminated by DQ because she released a hold. Then it came down to Bianca Belair and Naya outside the ring. They got counted out. And Lana won your sole survivor by doing nothing. But what's in, you know, most of saying here is the streak. Streak's over. So I'll say about that. <laughs> so the greatest streak I had ever. Faith in a the the Undertaker. Who's he? <laughs> to get the Undertaker. Who's he? When you've got the la- streak of Lana going to the table. What did I you had think faith of this? In Lana beating the streak, or did I have faith in it? <laughs> I thought it was going to happen before you give your thoughts. Um, you have Lana going to the table. She forgot about the rest of the match. She comes in, takes a pin, and wins. But they didn't do that, which I think. That could be a good way to go. What did you think about this one? It was better than the Raw men's team SmackDown match, um, but it wasn't a good finish. Um, overall, the one who looked most impressive and showcased her athleticism and powered through Bachelor's Clutch, I've got to say, is Belair. Um, she looked impressive in that match and uh, I just hope WWE don't mess this one up really with Belair yeah I could see you as a future but now he's champion yeah. maybe the Rumble possibly what do you think totally totally um, 
WrestleMania potential any day really. But she looked prop. She looked amazing on that and on that night. Yeah, um, definitely. I think they could build certainly build her up as a star, and I think this could kind of was the push that she needs. And it keeps keeps her making look keeps her looking strong by being counted out. That doesn't harm anybody. Um, so we'll go to the third match of the night. Intercontinental champion Sami Zayn to go and US champion Lashley. <laughs> what did you think? Oh, oh, on paper, I predicted Bobby Lashley to win this match on paper. Um, but one thing. Sami Zayn would have cheated his way through and won this match. It was a good, it was a good fun match, you know, with Bobby Lashley squashing Sami Zayn. But I really had high potential in in knowing Sami Zayn would have done something on the night to cheat his way and win and steal that match. And then um, because Bobby Lashley squashed him so quick, it wasn't. Great, it wasn't a great match. It was fun to see Sami Zayn get squashed, but I'm not going to remember this match. I'm not going to look back and say, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go and watch this match. No, very true. If a new <laughs> fan came up to me now and said, Oh, I'm just getting interested, I've heard of, for instance, Randy Orson Undertaker, for example, what match would you recommend? This wouldn't be it. Um, <laughs> it was what it was. I thought again, Blade Zane was going to win. I thought you have know, Lashley looking strong, builds up the hurt business. Um, I thought they were going to do exactly what they did. So you have Zane winning, and he tried to win. He, you know, give it. Zane plays a really, really good heel. He healed it more than Lashley did, trying to get DQ'd by the other members of the hurt business, trying to get counted out, using the referee's five count. But Lashley winning, fantastic. But this also also means in a couple of towel means nothing. That's not just Sami Zayn that's I think very talented and a star in the making. But the Nicole Tile just means nothing. Now it's just <sighs> a towel been held by many greats and now it's just uh oh, doesn't matter. I was just will actually lose left to beat Zayn like he's nothing. <laughs> So let's get into the main event, the best match of the night. I thought I might do it. if somebody asked let's, what match would you recommend, maybe this will be it, possibly, maybe. Um, Universal Champion, the Tribal Chief, Raymond Reigns, taking on Scotty Sackmas, WB Champion, Drew McIntyre, I'll take this first. Yeah, good main event, definitely. Went everywhere, fought everywhere, brawl it was, spear to the announced, not the disabled, the barricade. I think Reigns get away from, completely away from the shield, just super monk punch, get rid of it. Um, that's a very face move, I think. There you go. Get rid of the music, get rid of the tantrum, everything, anything you connect him with the shield, get rid of. Rollins has done it, Amrose did it before he left WWE. Uh, neither guy looked weak here. Very, very, very good storytelling match. And you, you had Juice or Cost, Drew McIntyre the win. And Roman Reigns. With, the, with the submissions were kind of a brand new move from Reigns which is good and this loss does not make McIntyre look weak at all even though he should have been on Raw and wasn't um, but yeah it doesn't make him look weak at all if he comes on winning does his match loss really matter not really what did you think The tail was as good as anything WWE. The tail was as good as anything WWE has produced in the past four or five years, and this match lived up to the weighty expectations set for it after a fantastic promo on Friday SmackDown. Um, again, was it a candidate match of the year? No, but it was a fantastic match on that night. Um, I'm very critical. I'm very critical of Roman um, in the past years, but this new thing he's got going on with the Tribal Chief, um, when he's slipped away from the big dog, 
era and he's moved into this heel mode um, with Paul Hyman. Um, it's looking better for Roman Reigns. Um, it's actually quite eye-catching. Um, it's got me on the edge of my on my seat anyway. Um, I'm enjoying seeing Roman Reigns more now. Um, but again, um, Drew McIntyre entered that arena and he looked gutsy. He looked resilient. Um, he looked dominant. Um, what you'd expect from an A-lister. Um, same with Roman. Um, resilient, gutsy, dominant. Um, they both gave it their best. It was it was a slobber knocker. Um, but again, they tore that roof down on that night. And um, fantastic match. Do you think that Reigns would get rid of Shield music? He needs to. Yeah. De definitely Jey Uso now. They could have team music together. They should just anyway. do... Um, he, he, needs a, he needs a theme fitting for his tribal chief faction. Um, that's what I believe anyway. The Shield, yeah. he should have he changed his Shield music since Dean Ambrose had left, you know, the, <laughs> it's shocking how he ain't changed his music. For, you know, it's the same music since he's, since he started. Dean Ambrose wasn't the best team ever, but at least he changed it. So that was something. Uh, so I you let one thing about well, Dean Ambrose. Sorry. I want to say one thing about Dean Ambrose. Um, everyone's very critical of Dean Ambrose. Um, but WWE jobbed him. Um, he was probably, in my eyes, the better of the three out of the Shield. And that, that's just me saying that. I think now he's got a lot better. He's been an incredible AEW champion. Um, but I think there he is loses few, that too, mate. There, there is quite some evidence to prove that Dean Ambrose was, was the better in WWE. Um, but anyway, that, that's another conversation for another day. We'll very, very, very quickly talk about that match. So it's Omega, Moxley, December 2nd, which I think they should have said before Revolution, but there it is. Who do you see winning this? Kenny Omega, John Moxley. Yeah. Oof. I think Moxley. Honest, well, mate, what do you that, think? That was a that promo, Moxley, John Moxley, that promo John Moxley dropped was was phenomenal. Um, um, who's going to win? It's hard to say because the first time they clashed, it was a slobber knocker. And um, I think we're going to get that same quality match again. Um, it's going to be a close one here, I, I think. I think Kenny Omega will win. Yeah, I think he takes the title, but I think they be they DQ or something, and they build it for yeah. Revolution and and, and then uh, they... Moxley it for a year, and you do it on pay per view. But whatever. So, um, and that's but something the thing very is, quickly, though, that... this. I just want to highlight one thing here. The thing that AEW are doing right now, where they're doing the, a title match on one of their branded episodes here, you know, Dynamite and whatever. This is what Raw, this is what SmackDown should be doing. Um, this is what Raw and SmackDown were doing back in the in the heyday, and it was really good, do you know what I mean? And this is what WWE are lacking, that creative, that drive, that um, wanting to bring back old school fans. And I guarantee you, if WWE just said one night and said, all right, we're going to have Drew McIntyre, bang, Randy Orton, total match. People will be like, well, wow. Last week on Raw. <laughs> but it was there a, you go. Yeah, it was there to tell us last week on Raw. They don't have to tell us every week. You can't, you can't have um, Randy Orton win the title and then two weeks later he's losing it to Drew McIntyre. 
very quickly, something that AEW does very well is a pay per view for every few months rather than every month or two a month or three a month. Is that's way too much, and it and they feel like pay per views rather than ah, we'll just throw these matches together. Anyway, your letter grade for Survivor Series. I only enjoy two matches in the old pay per view, so I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a B. Um, for the simple fact that it was the Undertaker, it was a legend that saved the night. Yeah, that the Undertaker for me it would have been C plus with him. Yeah, B. Um, as great as the Undertaker is, legend icon, phenom, all of that. They relied on him, and he outsh- out- outshined, outshadowed the rest of the show. Fantastic. Um, very, very quickly, let's run through champions. So let's do this quick, as quick as we can. So New Day and Street Profits. I see New Day losing to Hurt Business. Street Profits, no idea. What do you think? New Day losing to Hurt Business. That's the only tag team that's good, good on Raw. That's all, that's all I've got, Jesus. I think Hurt Business will win. And who do you see Street Brothers losing to? It? I'm guessing they're going to lose at some point. So who do you see them losing to? It's Matt Dane ain't got a tag team, have they? <laughs> Zara and Nakamura. And Not a decent it. one, anyway. Not a decent Jesus, tag team. Got anyway. one. You've got one tag team that they've kind of split up already. Well, I will, I will <laughs> say that. I will. I will say though, Cesaro and Nakamura need to split, go their own ways. The better singles, give Cesaro a push title, give him the title, and same for Nakamura, give Nakamura the title, and bring back Nakamura's old theme. Yeah, lastly, I see you losing to Keith Lee, maybe at TLC, and then. Daniel Bryan, maybe? What, yeah, do, you, what maybe. do you think? Same. Um, Sasha Banks, Carmel, I'd say, at the Rumble, not at TLC. I think they'll have a match at TLC. So Banks will win. Match at the Rumble. Asuka. I, 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 could, I, could, I could see it going as far as WrestleMania. That's just me. Maybe. Though. Possibly. And then your two main champions, Reigns. Won't be losing any time soon. And McIntyre, probably the same. No, actually, no, you know, McIntyre, Orton at the Rumble. What do you think? I reckon Orton's, Orton's going to win the title back. And then Edge is going to come out before WrestleMania. And then Edge is going to win that title at WrestleMania. I think Edge wins Reigns, the Rumble. I think that's how he gets Reigns his shot. Reigns is going to keep the Universal title through till. WrestleMania, and then he'll probably lose after WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of it. Do you want to tell everyone your YouTube, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Yeah, basically, with it, we are the show on YouTube that never sleeps. Um, we do our gaming reviews. We do film reviews on Film Parade. We do wrestling reviews on the Contenders Corner. And we also do monthly unboxings on our channel and uh, we review them on, on our channel as well also. Um, so, yeah, guys, if you enjoy Review Geek 3000, then please come over and have a look. Yeah, go and subscribe to him, check out his videos, leave a like, and I will we'll leave a, his link in the uh Was reading to me. We'll leave, leave, um, leave his link in the as, description. As, sorry. As the channel grows bigger, we will do monthly giveaways, but we're getting to that stage as we as we get bigger. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you can, you can join me again for another video. Maybe oh, yeah, also, take man, I'm, I'm... predictions, possibly. We'll see. Um, maybe get a third person involved. I like to keep things different and creative as I can on here. So, yeah, thank you for joining me. And we'll just put you backstage just for now while I do my outro. Okay. Yeah. Go for it, mate. Yeah, then. So, yeah, so thank you, Review Geek 3000, for joining me. Um, to come up to an hour video almost. So, this is a long one. Um, I said, go subscribe to him, 
Make sure you like, comment, do all of that. Tell them I sent you. Um, and yeah, all of that. His link will be in the description. And Survivor Series was all right. It won't be a pay per view album and be remembering forever. Undertaker, unfortunately, as great as he is, I shadowed the entire pay per view. Shadowed, mm, whatever. Um, very, 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 very quick guitar rift, all of that, the Paul Bearer hologram. All cool, all great. Undertaker, man, a few words didn't really say much. Anyway, so I've been the man. I've been Ricky Goldman. I've been better than you. The spotlight's on me, which should belong nobody else, because I am Ricky Goldman. <laughs>